we all met? Pat, Pat. Here is a marvelous, convenient place for our disciples. This green pot shall be our stage, this hawthorn break our tiring house, and we will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Pen sequence. What sayest thou, Unbottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will simply never please. First, Pyramus must draw his sword in order to kill himself, something which the ladies simply cannot abide. How answer you that? By God, scary. Out of wit, I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue, and let it seem to say that we shall do no harm with our sword. And, for more better assurance, let it say that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Nick Bottom the Weaver. That should put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue, and it shall be written in eight and six. No, no, no. Make it two more. Let it be written eight and eight. Do not the ladies be afraid of the lion? I fear it. I promise you. <laughs> Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves to bring in. God shield us. A lion amongst ladies is a most dreadful thing, for there is not a more fearful wildfowl than your lion living, Rawr. and you ought to look to it. Therefore, we must have another prologue saying, he's not a lion. <laughs> Nay, he must name his name, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And he must speak through saying thus, or to the same defect, ladies, or fair ladies, I would wish you, or I would request you, or I would entreat you, not to tremble, not to fear, my life for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, it is not so. Nay, it were pity of my life. And then, let him simply name his name and tell them that he's snug the joiner. <laughs> well, we will have such a prologue, but there's two hard things. That is, bring the moonlight into a chamber before you know Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Not the moonshine with every player play? Calendar, a calendar. Look in the almanac. Find out moonshine. <laughs> it's not December. Gosh, no. 23rd. Yes, yes, it'll shine that night. Yeah. Yeah. Why then, may we leave a casement of the great chamber window where we have our play open, and may the moon shine in at the casement. Aye. Or else one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lantern and say, he comes to disfigure or to present the person of moonshine. Then, there's another thing. We must bring a wool into the great chamber, for Pyramus and Thisbe, says the story, did talk through the chink of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some man or other must present <laughs> wall. <laughs> and let him have some loam, or some plaster, or some rough cast about him to signify wall. And let him hold his fingers thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. <laughs> if that may be, then all is well. Come, sit, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter into that break, and so everyone according to his cue. What have been homespuns are we at swaggering here? So near the cradle of the fairy queen? What? A play toward? I'll be an auditor, an actor too. Perhaps if I see cause. Speak, Pyramus, Thisbe, stand forth. <coughs> Thisbe, the flowers of odious things. <laughs> odious! <laughs> Odors, savors oh, sweet, so hath thy breath, my dearest is. But hark, a voice, stay thou but here and while, and by and by I will to thee appear. This must have sweet now. <laughs> I, Mary, you must, you must understand, we go into the here noise, you heard. 